What's up? I'm with Amaron Roosevelt, and we've been making uh, some really cool clubs. Uh, he actually helped me out with uh, some of my new clubs. You are a genius, Amaron, and I gotta say, Dr. Mukin, thank you very much. Uh, it's been, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm learning a bit, bit by bit, but I'm learning to make some cool clubs. How did you come up with this idea with the magnets? Uh, I used to play with magnets when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandma had uh, some magnets in a box. And when uh, I saw clubs, I noticed that the, the foam sticker right. in the top of the club uh, was black on those clubs, like Hendrix Perrette. And uh, the magnets in the box were black, so I kind of thought, oh, it would be cool if those were magnets. And then some years later, I got some um, super strong magnets, and I tried it, and it worked. And uh, people were kind of hyped, and it was seemed to be a good idea so what was your first trick that you did with the magnets oh I actually have some recordings of me just doing some basic jamming with it but I think it was like uh, <laughs> cool. something super boring like sticking them together and like swinging them like this and like yeah something like this with the connected shape it super still looks cool though you know you can balance it and then swing it yeah you, really can. Cool. you got some cool stuff uh, what what other stuff have you done with uh, ideas with juggling that you like well uh, and idea I had uh, just for this convention or like a while back is the drunk Russians okay and I, I made a product that I could sell some months ago and uh, I brought some this convention it seemed to be a very fun thing that people enjoy what's that all about a, a ball that's instead of filled with sand it's filled with a single weight like a steel metal sphere like mm -hmm. and it uh, wobbles around the sphere so the shell is like all wobbly and stuff and it becomes super hard to juggle and, and actually it's fun to do it's, it, it feels like you're a beginner again like trying out juggling for the first time pretty much because the tr throws become so inconsistent and random wow does it does the ball move in the air as well yeah it, it, it? The, sh the shell wobbles around the steel sphere so it Insane. looks like it moves a lot it's, it's pro maybe even visible for the audience, I guess, if you would perform with it. Wobbly balls. Okay, you want to show us what? And then he's got the mirror rings. Here's the mirror rings. So these are some of your inventions. Like these are the wobbly balls. Good. Go for it. Show us what it's all about. Okay. So expect me to drop. That's kind of the idea. Whoa. Like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Let me see. Oh my gosh. It's <laughs> look what it looks like when it bounces. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's Amazing. So there's something inside there that... And then we also have like uh, uh, magnetic balls. <laughs> okay, magnetic balls. That's cool. When, so you, when can... you take them apart, they become like wobbly balls. How, well, how, how would we be able to take that apart? Let's see. That's strong. Wow. And they stay together? Yeah. There we go. That's cool. So what's up with these? Uh, just um, when you remove the, the protective film here. Okay. It, yeah, you, you're not doing it. Yeah, but I'm just going to show a little bit, you know, so it becomes Whoa. actually reflective. Very nice. And it's very nice, yeah. And then you would put that onto a ring or you just juggle it like this? You can glue them together and it becomes stiff. It's very, very fluffy as it is, but when you, when you put glue between it, it becomes kind of stiff, like a real ring. And so you like the shine when the lights hit it? That's what yeah, that's you nice. liked about it? Yeah, isn't it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's great. Maybe someone has a better idea of how to use it. Like, I just thought it would be cool. You can use it as a mirror. You can yeah, kind sure. of check yourself out. <laughs> You, and, and, uh, you can blind the audience if you want, kind of like mess with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can find all kinds of uses for them. It's sure. very cool. Very cool. And what are these? Uh, these are uh, these um, fidget sticks. Fidget sticks. You kind of flip them on the table like this. Okay. And like uh, maybe try some different tricks, like uh, something like this. Whoa. Yeah, that was intended. <laughs> that was interesting. And you can also make it climb a metal surface. So wait, it's a magnet? Yeah, th these are magnetic fidget sticks. Okay, you want to try doing something like with it more? I mean, how does it? If you come with me, it's a bit bad lighting. Let's but do it. I'll show you. Twist brand. So you can put it on a side of a metal wall like this. That's okay. Good. And you can make it climb it. Oh, cool. Wow. And maybe even get it up here if you're... Nice. Whoa, whoa, that just can, bounced I can, off. I can try again. Yeah. Uh, almost. Well. Yeah. So this is a I great toy. Fun. Kids would love these. You can juggle with these. This could be a cool act. Where did you come up with this idea? Oh, it's right here. Uh, it's right here. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. How did you come up with this idea? Uh, I just got some from uh, my friend Howard mm -hmm. and I decided to try putting magnets in them because it's worked before. Yeah. And uh, I was... You make a lot of cool tricks out of them, yeah? I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see that I actually could do this. 
and it also could that's flip, so cool it could flip upside down as well but it's much harder to do but yeah wow so which ones are your favorites do you like oh. the magnetic clubs well the, uh, yeah. balls after this convention i actually really like the wobbly balls like now you, you're, so it's what, what you're into new okay yeah, but uh, i think really magnetic clubs is the best uh, thing it, it has the most potential mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. You got saying. a lot of stuff over here. So you got widgets and you got clubs. So these are the Henry Pirouettes, right? Why do you like the Henry Pirouettes? Uh, the long handle and the good center of mass you can do this, this really relaxing kind of idling trick. Very oh, easy cool. On I like it. It's nice. A, they look nice too. I'll, I have some of those. Yeah. Those are great. The they are sweet. I have had them. The, the first club I had and I just stuck with them. They are very sweet. It's yeah. So <laughs> super sweet. Cool. Well, very much. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. How did you start getting into juggling? Uh, when I moved to a bigger city, uh, that's called Östersund mm -hmm. in the north, in central north part of Sweden. Right. Uh, they had like uh, circus, youth circus tryouts and stuff. So I, I went there and I tried it and I was taught juggling the first day and mm -hmm. I was able to do it right away. So wow, I, just I three balls with. like that. Yeah, well, I mean, after the, the lesson was done, but like not picked up and do it, did it, but like. But it came easy, yeah. Yeah, cool. I'd say it's pretty easy. But I mean, I, I had to practice a lot. I mean, I, I was able to do like maybe twenty catches the first day, but not like able to do any tricks or anything. Mm -hmm. That came later. But it, I I really liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. So I, I stuck with it, and here I am. Yeah. What's your favorite prop? Uh, clubs. Clubs. Why? Far, yeah. Yeah, of course. Why clubs? Well, I like that there's, uh, I think rings are too light and flimsy and hard to deal with, but they also have the spin and everything. But uh, I like to, to be able to do more than just to have a yeah. point. I want to have the spin and the, the options that that brings to the prop. Yeah. And then... Uh, I can see you do Alberts really well. You like to flip around your yeah, body yeah, and stuff. Yeah, the handle enables some balance. more tricks. Like, uh, Very you can, cool. You can reach like you can like throw behind your head and under your arm like at the same time with clubs you can't really reach that with balls so there's some some tricks that are not uh, possible with balls so and i like body throws that kind of yeah. weird stuff so i love that stuff yeah, so, so, yeah and it makes it fun because you can always try different ideas after that yeah, sure. new ideas the rolls and the wraps and it's kind of like a mix of uh, staff and uh, well well club is a club i guess so it's not a mix of anything else what right. got you the idea to make this club that comes apart and all these crazy other types of clubs after you like uh, the clubs. Yeah, the cool is ghost cubes were very inspiring at the time, like uh, at the same shape and everything. I mm -hmm. was thinking a lot about that. And uh, also it's, um, it was not just one thing though, like it's also uh, ideas of magnetic clubs. And I was also interested in the 3D printing technology that was becoming big, like it was very big, it's still big. So I wanted to try to do stuff with that. And uh, I went with the, the divisible club like the four four part club yeah uh, it seemed like a good idea and it had some cool cool functions but uh, I'll be making some more 3d printed clubs in the future did it take a lot of time was there a lot of money spent making that club yeah actually I, it was a bit um, a bit stupid to just have uh, have it printed in such high quality it was very expensive but uh, uh, Do you know it, how it much in kind of dollars kind of would that would be? Uh, $1,000 about. $1,000 yeah, for one club? Like yeah. Wow. But it's, it's um, <laughs> very, very durable. It's very sturdy and um, high quality, nice print. So that's nice at least. It won't break. Yeah. It seems. <laughs> I hope not for a thousand bucks. When you were uh, with Emil Dahl, I know he does a lot of the magnets now and performs mm -hmm. that. How did uh, that come about with uh, you creating this club and then did you, you know, work with the DOC school and then yeah. eventually create the act? I held a workshop at the DOC and all the students, younger students there at the time and some mm -hmm. older students also joined in and we yeah. had the workshop together and made clubs. And then we were all like, it was uh, more than just one hour, I think we were jamming and doing some tricks. So everybody was there, Tony Pazzo, Wes Peden, yeah. Neil Dahl, Patrick, everyone? Victor Ulleberg, I think, and okay. even Peter Åberg. As I remember it, mm. I heard it was kind of crazy. Like you used glue instead of screws. What was that like? Yeah, uh, th th it was the only thing we knew. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very it's, messy. <laughs> yeah, it was incredibly messy, and some clubs uh, did not turn out that well. And because, as you know, in the workshop we just were, yeah. uh, yeah. some people put the magnets the wrong way. Uh, so, 
then they're glued in. You and can't connect. Oh, the you gloves. can't connect it. Now you then have to go back yeah, and redo you it. You have to like oh, yeah, cut yeah. it out from the club and stuff. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, quite a bother. So you wanted south or north on one side, and you can't do it. And now you have to re back, go back and redo it. Yeah, with, and with the magnets, with glue and everything, it, it kind of messes up the foam ends on the club. So you kind of have to buy new ones after a while, and kind mm -hmm. of quickly. I mean, it wasn't all bad. Thanks to it going so badly, I had to like. Uh, they paid me to make clubs for them in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a good uh, thing for my resume, really. Well, nice of Jay to like, think act. that, yeah, come here and show the clubs. Like, yeah. Super. Jay was awesome. I mean, his workshop was really cool. He was very, yeah, yeah, very, yeah. like, he's a genius. You're yeah, a genius. Yeah. And it's like, he goes right into the whole creativity of creating something new. What you think juggling is, now you just totally like change your mind and forget what you know and it's it's like wow yeah and same with you like you're creating something new as well and that's pretty I, cool i've been to some of jay's uh, teaching lessons before you know mm -hmm. at uh, dancing school on and it's always amazing to listen to his thoughts and ideas like he's a big inspiration like probably the, the biggest inspiration for, for you yeah yeah for sure cool awesome most likely there you go jay your big inspiration awesome very cool like i i, I think he's i think he's uh definitely one of the one of the most influentials of most jugglers see around because yeah, sure. he, when he started, you know, he still had that mindset, and now where he is now, it's just, it's amazing, you know. I, yeah, I definitely am inspired him from all the things he's done, and to meet him here, I, I met him many years ago, but meeting him again, and how the passion he has in his heart, it's like I, I feel the same thing. When you're around him, you can't help mm -hmm. to be like, wow, okay, I'm so enthused about this or do this, and he just he feeds off of that. He'll talk to you for hours, really? and it's so yeah. cool. I mean, what's it like and being around that? And he has time with everyone. Like, yeah. he speaks, to, he speaks yeah. to you, even if you're not a big name juggler. Like, oh, absolutely. So that's super nice of him. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just nice to see someone that has the passion so much, you know? It's not just, oh, I want to juggle. It's like, no, this is his life. Mm -hmm. You know, if, to us, it's all of our life. It yeah. becomes your life. Yeah, yeah. Just like a surfer. It's like a surfing life. Lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. For you, what's it like being around Jay or being around the docks? Like, going there and seeing all these guys creating these creative ways of juggling. And then just the old school or the typical juggler you see. When someone says, hey, I can juggle and juggle three balls. You go there, you see something very special. What's that like? Does it motivate you to do new tricks too? Or create new props? I mean, it's much the same feeling you get from a festival, I think. Mm -hmm. Then when you feel, feel, uh, meet people that uh, like have the same uh, uh, passion and drive, you know? And uh, Yeah, but over but there, it's like a whole new world. Yeah, they have like sure, a very it's, creative You could say it's a high level mindset. and like it's more, more focused and less messing around more um, more like pushing awesome. the envelope or what you could say yeah. but uh, and then you're around that 24 7 that's going to definitely yeah for get sure you going. do you I feel like you've grown as a juggler just being around them yeah i think so yeah sure wow. like meeting them there and uh, joining some lessons and definitely helped me grow as a juggler yeah. for sure so awesome that you're giving back to the juggling world with all these great ideas what made you want to do that what made you want to uh, just give back with saying hey i had this magnet idea now you know, Emil Dahl's doing that act, or hey, I have these rings. I don't have time to research all the things I come up with, so it would, it's just super cool if someone else wants to, like, finds it interesting and wants to spend time on it. Very that's cool. That's like a great honor, like, very cool. good jugglers take time, and wow. That's so what was it like for the first time, seeing Emil's acts, uh, Emil Dahl's act? It, yeah, well, it's amazing. He has such great research they find with the, the, the pole and the club spinning down it like it's a super good trick right yeah uh what was the what was the uh, the, the reaction the emotion when you saw it for the first time you're like wow no, i didn't know these clubs would do this i i was there when he found the trick okay so i'm i'm just proud and happy to see him actually going and making an act out of it it's super cool uh, amazing really like it's an honor really that people that good jugglers like world-class actually go perform around the world with the, yeah. like an, an idea I made like that's that's super cool I, uh, I'm so happy I gotta say I'm very honored that you helped me with these clubs and I'm really excited to try them out and try some stuff with you know magnets and so forth yeah, that's yeah. just I hope you find something cool really yeah. on that side it just seems something fun to try you know who knows maybe it'll lead to another idea and some other type of prop or invent something new you know when you try something like this it's outside the box and you sure. want to try something else after that yes. too when you were in Sweden growing up um, why didn't you want to go into performing why did you just want to do more of the invention style of uh, helping well, with I the noticed, performing world. I noticed I did not do so well on stage. Because you're was... a really good juggler. You got some cool videos. You can do a lot of great stuff. 
You can put together an act. I, I've done some act, I've done pr some performances, and they, some of them went quite all right. But uh, I notice I'm very pressured by being so solo on stage. Okay. I find it really, really tough, actually. Yeah. But uh, it can be it's pretty scary, I know, you know. But you got to just go out and you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh well, maybe. But uh, I, I think I actually suffered from like uh, high blood pressure at the end there. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling like really sick and <laughs> stuff. So. Like I, I have kidney failure, so oh, wow. I actually have high blood pressure and I take medication for it now. But mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about that at the time. But I, I did suspect that something was not quite right. I felt a bit worried. But mm -hmm. anyway, when I was performing on stage with other people, yeah. other judges backed me up in the youth circus when I started when I was 16. Cool. And like t until I was like 19 or something. Right. Uh, I felt very insecure on stage. That was like, I felt uh, not so stressed out. Right. So I you had some friends with you who can hang out yeah, and I go I on stage and, hey, all right, cool, let's do that yeah, passing. I quite or enjoyed that, actually. Uh, looking back at it. So you would prefer to be with a group act than just do more solo? Yeah. Actually, solo is a little yeah. different kind of feeling for you compared to with other friends of you. Yeah, it, it, it was much less stressful that, just because of that reason. With that, would you want to do some future performing with, with groups in the future? or? I mean, in the future, I think uh, it wouldn't be as important. I think mm -hmm. I'm more accustomed to uh, such... Uh, situations anyway now yeah for some reason like I can see you love juggling I can see you love creating new ideas yeah, that's the best and it's and, and you love it when you see someone that has uh, you know the idea that you created and show it to the world you know that's a yeah, big honor course. for you yeah of course, of course. how much uh, practicing do you do when you when you juggle on your own uh, well it, it's changed a lot since I fell ill you know mm -hmm. but before that I practiced uh, I would say like around 2007 to 2010 and stuff like that. And I, I think uh, 2011 also I practiced lots of three, four hours a day at least. Wow. But it's, I don't think it's so much, but it was, uh, I'm not trying to exaggerate, so I don't want to like... Now this would be something we just put on some good music and just go at yeah, it for like, yeah, hours, and hours, and hours and hours and hours? Yeah, And yeah. just work on... Would now, would you just uh, actually, work on one trick, like the Alberts all day long? No, no, I, I actually go between all the tricks but uh, yeah Albert sh I did focus quite a bit on it that one in particular yeah, but I, I, always, I, I always switched between many tricks actually at the first That's I was like uh, focusing on yeah, doing a series of two throws that was like how I built up longer runs actually doing like one two and then like one two one two thinking okay. about like that it worked good but I mean so it was like right left and then left right and then right left and then left right actually I always started right with the same hand uh, you really, I, I think like you really want to do the easiest way you can to get longer runs started because so then you, you get start with the right hand, right, left, and then do it again, right, left, and later on if you want to add, you just add three throws, four throws, five throws, but still start with the right. No, I, I would add the two throws again, like uh, four, so with four throws and six throws and eight throws. Ah, know? nice. Uh, because I felt like that was a good rhythm to learn it down. I mean, it was it was loops, loop sided, like what you say, like uh, not an even rhythm to begin with, but. Um, once you start to get like longer runs, okay. it, um, it evens out and you become good at the trick. Nice. That's how I felt anyway. And that's how you go with all the tricks now. You do one, two, one, two, uh, and then add four, then six, then eight. You feel like that's the best way to help you, because you want to find the most efficient and the most, you know, uh, successful way to get something faster, right? Well, well, Your uh, body memorizes it faster. Well, first of all, like, okay, if you go even further back, like I start with like doing tennis and stuff like that. like every yep, third one. row like that's how we start and right like very f first you just practice with one club of course but uh, i mean then it's like that part is always the same with every body throw like break down the trick to the most basic component because if you if you can't do the throw with one club like easily and like effortlessly then uh, juggling it will be completely impossible so mm -hmm. so mash the one and work your way up yeah and then if you like find that that has certain type of rhythm works better with one trick then you could, could go with that I suppose but that's kind of individual I think between people and the trick like for example with, uh, with like laces I just went for it and it wasn't such a hard trick so mm -hmm. uh, I just you know you, you work you work on the throw a bit and then you like try to run it when you practice you don't have much ceiling height I've seen like in your videos mm -hmm. how do you manage to do all these tricks with a small space yeah, yeah, you just um, <laughs> just just try to bring down the spin and like make lower throws and yeah. faster throws. So it's forced you to be better at just doing things low, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, sure. Yeah. I can. Run. You recommend just hey, practice in a small space. No, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a slow way of learning. Actually, uh, like my my record with five clubs is like I think. 
Just maybe. by Club Cascade? Yeah, like, but on singles then, because mm. I always do singles. I f find it easier on the low ceiling height. Yeah. It's like, it's not super low, but it's like eight, eight feet, I think, pretty okay. much. Yeah. So it's uh, like, you can kind of reach it like this, I think, like a little hop. Uh, but my record with five club singles is like 250 or something. And I feel like that's really bad for a five club record. So, because I, I can't do any more with doubles either because I don't practice doubles at all. Mm. So. Wow, so, just singles. Yeah, so, so uh, I do feel like in, in 13 years of juggling, I should be able to like run five clubs, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of bad at it. So <laughs> I don't think it's an efficient way of learning like any trick that is suffering from the low ceiling height is not helped by it mm. um, right but if you do manage to learn it and it become comfortable with it anyway then i mean then it's fine i guess but it probably took you longer time so it's not efficient uh, mm -hmm. I don't, don't know what to say about it really i mean i can tell you the um, a kind of exercise i did when i was starting to get better with okay. back crosses reverse back crosses albert and treblas uh, that is quite simply to do a run of 100 catches collect wait a few minutes do a 100 catches collect and repeat 10 times and uh, I and this is for one trick? or for Yeah, this is for one trick. So and you do that 10 times yes. for 100 catches, yes. and then do it again, take a break 10 times yes. again. And the goal so 100 is catches 10 times, perfect. Yes, and uh, the goal is not to drop. But I mean... What if you did drop? I, I don't do redo it, but I do make a note of it. So you say, okay, I'll make a note. 8 out of 10 times, I did it with no drops. Yeah. But I went for 100 catches no matter what. So if you drop, you still go to 100. So you dropped on 70, you'll still go, okay, 71, no, 72, I, I 73. No, I actually break the attempt then and make a note that I did not do 100 that time. Oh, so you, you go until you drop and you stop and you do another 100. Yeah, un or until So 100. that would consider but one uh, round. Yeah, but like, Whoa. I was okay. like, uh, I was only starting to do that really when I was able to do 100 mm -hmm. catches. So like I, I did sometimes manage even with Albert, the hardest breaks to do all 10 times. Yeah. So I mean, that's impressive. What, what was the motivation behind practicing so much? Is because did you want to just make these great videos that oh, you're like, wow, I made this cool video and they got this great response on YouTube. You know what? I'm going to practice more sure, because I want to make sure. this video or I have this idea. Because I can see you're not just the juggler. You're very good at making videos. You have really cool eye for you know seeing sigmatography and the, you, you can do the helicopter with spins and you can see a video oh that would look be a cool look or that would be a cool look so yeah, your videos sure. you know got cool music and cool visuals so I think that's something that you do you enjoy as well yeah yeah sure making videos is fun uh, but I feel like the older videos were not so elaborate like they're kind of yeah uh, well, some of them, More I, I, I tried yeah. at least, I guess, yeah. but I wasn't too good at it, I think, to begin with. But I, that's the same with everything, I mean, you learn. Let me ask you another question. Is this salmon in Sweden, is that what makes you like amazing juggler? Just eat all the good salmon, eat all the good food? Maybe, I eat a lot of salmon. There you go. Actually from that's Norway. That's what I thought. It's so good. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I loved it when I was up there. I'd eat it all the time. I remember I would go to the hotel and eat all the different, like, uh, sauces with fish. Sounds like some uh, shad gorge okay. day also, I, I don't know. Oh man, you're getting me hungry. <laughs> Sounds good. We, we mostly uh, just, you know, hunt uh, moose and shoot moose in the no northern Sweden. So more than fish actually. But oh, okay. When I was in Stockholm, I remember we had a lot of fish. We had a lot of fish yeah, everywhere it, we went. It's the, you know, the, I, I can't remember the word for it. The, 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 the coast is just next to Stockholm and there's some fishing mm. activity there, I guess. if the, What's so. your favorite thing to eat when you're in Sweden? My favorite food is um, called pulsa. Pulsa? Yeah. Okay, and what's it's, that? Uh, and it's uh, basically minced meat with some uh, boiled rice and yeah. some spices. And it's like, mm. it's kind of the waste meat, like all kinds of different stuff, like the stuff that you won't make any good cuts out of. Nice. And it's actually really good. Okay, <laughs> we go juggle, we have some pulsa. Good times. Great. What do so you like you to do when you're not juggling? Uh, I play some video games and I work. What I mean, do you do I, when I you work? work? I, I'm a bike mechanic. Okay, cool. Do you like riding from time to time? Do you ride a lot as well? Yeah, well I ride a unicycle. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm stuck with that. I think it's fun. Big unicycle? So I, yeah, I got a 10 foot, yeah, a 6 tw foot? 29er actually. Okay, like, they, so you got a cruiser. Yeah, more like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I drive some, some light mountain trails like... Um, On the unicycle? Yeah, I mean it's a 29er, big wheel, yeah. big, uh, big tire as well, so you okay. can ride over roofs and rocks and stuff like that. Not Nothing too advanced, like I don't do any like hardcore like jumping and stuff, like yeah. more like the stuff I can ride over basically. 
Do you have like a brake on your unicycle? If you go no, too it's, fast? it's uh, I bought it before they had brakes on the <laughs> unicycles. I think it's like uh, over 10 years old now. Wow, that's cool. That's a lot of work. I mean, that's a workout. I do yeah, unicycle yeah. in shows and it is a workout on your legs. So how many miles do you unicycle a day, would you say? I mean... <laughs> What's the longest used, you've done? I used to ride, uh, I'd say like six miles a day, something wow. like that, when I used it to commute. but. Uh, I don't usually ride so much anymore. Uh -huh. Wow. Also because, well, I, I'm with, I will uh, like a kidney transplant, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's the Well, that's I, wish, the I wish you all the best for that, and I hope everything goes well with, with that, uh, you know, kidney transplant. One more last thing. What has juggling given back to you? What's the gift that it's given back to you? Wow, I, I mean, only really feeling it this last few years, like, for real, for real, like... Uh, I mean, you're it's been famous. So, I mean, yeah, everyone sees you, so knows about you. It felt like, it, maybe it was, like, bubbling. I got some response on the videos and stuff, but, like, re the last few years, it's been so, so great. Like, everyone seemed to be, like happy and uh, meeting every peop all the people here, it's uh, such a great experience actually. Um, it feels like everyone is a familiar face, but, yeah. but, but you've only seen them on, on the internet yeah. before. But everyone's super happy and friendly yeah. and it's and super it, nice. We're a juggling family, you yeah, know, that, that's it's the, the performing that's the reward, world, right? you, you, small world. It's, it's a good community, Absolutely. that's the biggest reward I think. Cool. Thank you very much, Amron. You're an awesome guy. No problem. Good times, good times. Check him out, Amron. He's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to Mukin. Salita so. See you guys next Hello. time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>